Good afternoon. Welcome to the Teach with Tech conference. I'm so glad that you are joining me this afternoon. My name is Cami Butterfield from Baxter Springs, Kansas. I go by the blogging name Teaching with Appitude, and my session is called Paperless Possibilities. I want to get started because this is going to be literally jam-packed full of 30 minutes of information that you're going to be able to take back to your classroom or to your school. So I want to get started and get going. So, a few things about me, because I need you to understand where I'm coming from. I'm a 23-year classroom teacher. I have been in the third grade for 23 years. I do professional development for K-12, though, because a lot of the apps that I use can be used in any classroom. I have had iPads for the past eight years. Very passionate about reading. I have my master's as a reading specialist from Pitt State University. Uh, I am a self-taught iPad guru. I sat on my couch and while my husband was watching fishing shows, I taught myself how to use it. I am a completely paperless classroom and when school districts come in to see what we're doing with the iPads, they usually come to my classroom to see the different things that I am doing in my room. I'm also, like I said, a PD provider for teachers in um, any grade level. I can show them how to use uh, different apps, like the four basic apps that I use are usually apps that can be used on any type of device. A couple of things that I want to want to say is I have been trained in the apps that I have used besides the training that I've taught myself. I'm a class kick mentor and ambassador. I'm a seesaw ambassador. I am also an epic master teacher and I'm one of the first eight pit collage teacher ambassadors that were selected when pit collage went to pit collage edu. I was also the spotlight educator for the Midwest back in 2017. But enough about me because I want to teach you as much as I possibly can in this 30 minute session. There are more to iPads than just the apps. It's what I call Appitude that goes along with my, my blogging name. These are my two nieces. Um, their age range differs. Well, when they come to my house, I usually find them things where they have to work collaboratively. And aptitude to me is the attitude that you have towards using those devices. And that's where aptitude kind of came from. It's using apps and the attitude that you have towards them. It's like handing, handing me explain everything. The first time I ever used explain everything, I, w I felt like I was lost. But the third grader right next to me said, this is easy, Mrs. B. You've got to, you've got to be able to figure this out. Well, that's exactly right. My two nieces here, one is uh, 12 and one is 8. And they were playing a game um, that I had created for them in pit collage. And for 45 minutes, neither one of them argued. And these are two girls that have very different personalities. So technology kind of brings that element of excitement and um, collaboration with it because they after they finished this they wanted to create their own games and so they were they got their they got their iPads out and they both uh, came up with a new game board and they wanted to play each other's game which I find is an awesome part of technology why technology why why do we do this um, you can see and, and you'll see from the pictures from my classroom a lot of people are hesitant about putting kids in a classroom with technology but the thing is what what parents don't understand and what sometimes administrators don't understand it's it's a tool it's not a toy it's not going to replace me it is to help enhance what we're already doing and what we're already doing excellent in our classroom the the paperless possibilities that I want to show you today is this this picture for example I have one copy of something and I project that one copy 22 kids in one copy is something I, I pride myself on. I make one copy of something and they take a picture of it because guess what? Every single child in your classroom can take a picture because they have been handed a device. They've had some type of phone in their hand before. They all know how to take photographs. But one of my big thing, things that I always talk about is whoever's doing the most work is learning the most. So if you, the teacher, is doing the most work for them, they are not learning anything. So that's just something that, that in my classroom, 
that is kind of a, a motto. Whoever's doing the most work is learning the most. And my, and my students teach me something new every single day. I'm going to show you some practical and productive apps. I'm not going to show you apps that are going to keep your kids busy for 30 minutes at a time. Or it's just going to be a game um, like Fortnite where they spend you know, three or four hours and you don't, even, you don't even talk to them for three or four hours. Because to me, my numbing apps are no different than a stack of fill-in-the-blank worksheets. I could give them an app that will keep them busy and I and I would have to set a timer for them to be on. But I'm going to show you today practical and productive apps that you can take back into your classroom and share with your team or your administrators and, and show what kind of things um, can be done with technology. The example in this picture, this is an app called Class Kick that I will show you in a little bit. They are searching in their book for a list of three things that they saw at the first of the story. So they are going and doing a scavenger hunt with their piece of technology and using their book. I'm not, I promise that I will not waste your time with the apps that I show you today. Um, one of my favorite things that I've seen Jen Jones show is you never want to get on a plane where the pilot learned to fly from worksheets. Um, my, my kids know that when they come back from school, they are not going to have a stack of worksheets to fill out um, because they've missed something. But when my kids come back to school, they, they want to know what they have missed. You want to be able to show them practical applications that they're going to be able to use later in life. How to crop a photo, how to send a photo to somebody else, how to, how to replay your text so you can hear it to make sure it sounds right. You want to have that practical application. You, you don't see very many pilots carrying around a briefcase full of papers anymore. You see them carrying around some type of tablet or some kind of iPad to be able to navigate where that plane is going to be going. So um, the road to paperless was three easy things for me. And I'm not saying that you're going to get in this 30 minute presentation that you're going to be able to be paperless just like that because it's it wasn't a snap for me. But I want to tell you the easy things that help you become paperless. I had to have number one, easy apps. And I'm going to show you some easy apps that are wonderful for your students to be able to use and for you to be able to use. The second thing I had to have was I had to have a way to communicate with parents in a digital portfolio. I needed to be able to put whatever they were working on into something where parents could see it, I could see it, yeah. I could communicate with them, I could talk to them about things and I could be able to communicate with them. I also needed a way to be able to take home all of the all of the assignments that they had done for the day and to be able to give them communication back on that. So those are my first two steps of how I made it to paperless. I had easy apps, a way to communicate, which was, was I is what I use a seesaw. And then my third way is downloading all of my TPT products digitally to my iBooks on my iPad. So all of the items that I have in my, in my iBooks can be airdropped to my students. That was one of the handiest ways that I, I figured out how I could get all of the, the things that I needed to use because maybe I needed bits and pieces from here and bits and pieces from there. I can download all of those straight from Teachers Pay Teachers and they go right into my iBooks that's on my iPads. Um, and it's in it's stored there on my iBooks. The thing is, whenever you download it, it can be on there. And if you don't need it anymore, it you can you can re-download it later. That's what makes it makes it so great to download your prod products digitally. Now the next couple of pictures I want to show you, if you will notice in all of these pictures, my kids when we when I was two to one, they were totally focused on one being the you know the teacher and one being the student, and that gave them a lot of authentic learning because the the teacher enjoyed helping the student get better. But as you can see, technology brings that added element of um, accountability, and they loved other people being their audience. When, when I was two to one and we had, we had the sharing of the iPads my first um, years, eight years ago, 
they enjoyed helping each other. So a two to one ratio in a classroom with technology is actually pretty ideal because you have one that can assist and then you can have one that could be doing the, the talking or the working and then, then they flip flop that. But I never had a problem with them being off task because technology adds that element of excitement for them. And they also enjoyed the ownership of what technology gave to them. So I, this is one of my favorite examples. He's reading and she's following along and seeing how his voice uh, can go up and down because he wasn't loud enough. And so technology, technology to me has just, it's helped with discipline in my classroom. I have less discipline problems. Uh, my students don't miss as many days. They're excited when they have missed that they want to catch up on whatever whatever we did the day before. They know there's not going to be a set of worksheets setting on their desk. They know that they have tasks that they want to finish. I don't have very many missing assignments because I have students that are really excited about getting their assignments done. Um, when I went one-to-one -one, uh, four years ago, the added element of having their own set of headphones was very, very important because one of the apps that I'm going to show you here in a little bit uh, sometimes requires the teacher to give the directions orally. And so when we started adding um, the one-to-one -one and having their own headphones, I saw tons of progress because my uh, administration came in and said, we've got to put devices in every one of these students' hands because they saw how much that they could get done if they were not sharing devices. What I, what I think of when I think of what I do in my classroom, I think of it as being more than a worksheet. And everything that my students turn in is not the same carbon copy um, of what the person next to them is doing. If they're doing a book, book report, like for example, on this book report here that I've done in Pit Collage, not everybody's book report is going to look the same. It depends on what that child is either reading or if they've all read the same book. They did this book report based on um, a Facebook. The, the student was, or the, the character was a Facebook character. And so not everybody's is the same. So you're not getting that same generic answer that you would if you were doing, uh, doing a worksheet. Word work in my class has never been easier because we do all of our word work in the app Pick Collage. And I don't have to worry about missing letters. I don't have to worry about somebody losing their glue or their scissors. And that is what has been such, such a benefit to me because it's, it's more than that worksheet. They are excited about getting to do the assignments that we do in our classroom. Um, and when I don't have, you know, I, when I don't have to have desk and I don't have to have pencil and paper and, and all these thick books and stuff and all of the, these different supplies, I have more room for this. If you will look at every single one of these pictures, these kids are excited about what they are doing in the classroom, which makes me a happy, happy teacher because I have kids that are wanting to show more and express more and do more projects on their own. I, I mean, I have students that will get finished with an assignment and they'll say, hey, can I create something in pit collage to show what I what I'm interested in and can I do a little bit of research on it when you have kids walking up to you and wanting to do things like that that is the best feeling in the world as a teacher but uh, I have more room for this we play something called musical iPads uh, your iPads have you can get a dry erase board app on your iPads kind of like doodle buddy and we write a problem we turn the music on and you stop and each person is doing a different problem that somebody else has created. It is one of the best things that uh, my kids like beg to do every time uh, we get the iPads out in the morning. They're like, can we do musical iPads? We, all it is is a it's a dry erase board app and each student puts their own type of problem on there and they when the music stops, they stop on that iPad and they do somebody else's problem. But this is what technology has allowed me to do. It's allowed me to have more room for this. So students are teachers too. You gotta let them show you. This little guy right here loved to demonstrate how to do apps. 
and I was terrified of the app explain everything like I said earlier and he showed me not to be afraid you get them up because of technology they want to show other people what they know and that's what makes technology so great and that's what paperless possibilities to me means so I want to show you some really cool apps uh, for your iPad and in a little bit I'll show you some apps that are for any device that you have but I'm going to be showing you Doodle Buddy, Pit Collage and just the notes app that's already downloaded onto your iPad. I got 15 minutes to show you so let's go. Okay, Doodle Buddy is one of my favorites. This is uh, one that my kids absolutely love doing. Um, and it's because they love doing karaoke. And I didn't realize how much they love doing karaoke. But in Doodle Buddy, they allow you to use stamps. And I'm going to try to show you this with the best of my ability. But this is what my iPad looks like. Okay. And so I've turned on the stamp. Uh, the eyeball just like it's showing in the picture and when they do this this does not record this just gives them great practice pumpkins 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 orange fat and round full of seeds and pulp that grow on the ground and so it's like a karaoke um, karaoke time for them and they absolutely love it it is great fluency practice all it is is in doodle buddy there is a tic-tac-toe board in any picture of any poem that you have. You could actually have them take a picture of a poem that is on the board. You just hit the little tic-tac-toe board there, and it projects um, it projects all the different photos that you have in your camera roll. Or like I said, you can take just a picture from your camera, and the students absolutely love it. It is great fluency practice, and they love showing off how good they do it. Another thing that you can do in Doodle Buddy, like I said, it is a it is a like a drawing board or a draw, drawing dry erase board. Um, they can visualize and do reflective thinking in this. For example, in this one, this was a student that I had that did the chocolate touch for chapters three through one. He visualized him eating the toothpaste and I mean what a great way to get students to do this. I mean I have students that prefer to do it on paper and pencil but the thing is technology is a time saver. They don't have to get out all the, the colored pencils and markers and everything. They have all their colors right there in Doodle Buddy. Another thing that, that I do with this is I can change the color of your markers to do many things. So I can have them underlining the each individual word in hashtag fluency. And they can change their markers to do that. And then they can go back and they can do that karaoke with their fluency also. Just some amazing things that you can do in Doodle Buddy. And it just has limitless, limitless possibilities. And go to the next one. Notes app. This is free on iPads. There's no download that is needed. What I like about the Notes app as a teacher is my notes that I take, say for example, I go to a conference. I can take pictures at that conference. I can take notes at the conference. I can scan information that I, that I received at that, and I can put it into that note, note and then I can I can send it to other teachers. I can email that document to other teachers. I can add things and edit things later. And what I like about it, it has dates. Uh, it dates the notes for the students. So if they said that they were working on their spelling words and that they wrote their spelling words today and they wrote them three times each, I can look at that note to see what day they did it because I've had students try that on me before. I wrote my words three times each and I said, well, you did it on the 22nd and today's the 25th. So uh, kind of some great things that teachers need to know how to do. What I like about this is any word can be looked up with a personal dictionary. Um, you can highlight that word like it's highlighted right here and it will tell you and it will also say it for you. It'll tell you the part of speech. It will tell you other words that will come up with it, tell you the origin, but it gives you that dictionary entry just by holding down on that word, which it makes pretty amazing. We don't even need a dictionary in our classroom anymore. But this is a this is a perfect example of how these are things that need to be taught to students to be able to use technology 
technology efficiently in their classrooms. Um, what I like about it is you can add tables and you can add checklists on here. Um, it has so many different possibilities. And this is one that I'm actually going to show you that I have on my iPad already. And this is the same exact one. Um, but you can add these things, and these are the words that maybe they need help with and they need to go back over. But they can add, you can add your visualization to this because it allows you to draw now. This is all new in the Notes app in the last couple of updates that they have had. But this is, and you can add illustrations or photos that you need to give to your teacher. So they need to turn something in, do it in your Notes app. This is probably the best thing that, I, that I've ever seen in this, but I'm gonna copy this poem and then I'm gonna have it speak. My mirror likes to argue. He likes to fight and feud. He often disagrees with me. He's regularly rude. He's fond of making faces. He loves to sneer and scowl. Eh. So with that, they can go back over. For example, if they're struggling with two times two, uh, two times four equals eight, have them record, I mean, they, they copy that and then they hit, hit speak. It will speak that to them over and over again. Say they've typed something, they need to listen to what they have said, have them put it into the notes app first because they can change things quickly and it's just, there's so many different things that you can do with that notes app that people don't even realize that you can do. You can scan documents, you can listen to what you have typed, you can draw, draw on there. It just has so many different possibilities. Plus, it can be emailed. Pit Collage, probably my most favorite app that I use. Uh, we use two or three times a day. And if you'll take a picture of this Bitly, and uh, Bitly is case sensitive. This is our Teacher Ambassador um, blog that you can follow along with to see the different things that uh, can be done in Pit Collage. I'm just going to show you a few because I know that there are other presentations on Pit Collage. But I love the fact that you can take things off the internet, you can take them out of books, and you can take pictures of them, but you can do text evidence about a character. You can show what you, uh, what we've been learning about. If we do um, area figures, I have 20 students, I have 20 different problems. They can go around and take pictures of the different areas and then they can label them. I don't have to pull out a worksheet. I don't have to I don't have to worry about them copying off of somebody else because they are, they are excited about going to use their camera on their device to find somebody else's problem. What I like about this is I could give them this fun with alliterations worksheet and it will literally take them 2 hours to do. But if I say that I want you to find a picture of something and create an alliteration, they love doing authentic work because you know in this worksheet on the left that they are going to everybody's answer is going to be the same thing Tony lost two teeth okay that's that's an alliteration but my students have already learned what an alliteration is wouldn't it be awesome for them to find a picture of Target and make up an alliteration Tanya traveled to Target to get tomatoes and toothpaste and nobody's answers are going to be the same Let's see, pronouns. My The first time that it really hit me how important pit collage was, was the fact that I could put a graphic organizer in the background of a pit collage. But my students really struggled with what pronouns were. I could give them this pronoun worksheet, but I wanted them, after they learned what a pronoun was, to go in and find characters of people in stories and tell me what the pronoun was that went with their character. Because anytime you can add a visual, it's amazing. Um, you can take any graphic organizer that you bought from Teachers Pay Teachers, set it as your background, and then this one is I can closely read and reread complex text. They can go back, and my kids do not mind reading it four times if they're going to get to add text and they're going to get to change their text and they're going to get to add photos to it. They don't mind at all having to do that. It also makes math for my for my students more meaningful. They're getting to take pictures of things that they that they have worked on and that they have put um, pride into. They love getting to do this. 
character analysis. They can take pictures of that character from the book and add emojis. It, it, there's so many things that you can do in Pic Collage. All right, apps that I use on a daily basis. I use Seesaw to communicate and for students to turn all of their stuff in. I use Class Kick to introduce new topics. I use Epic. Epic is free for educators and it is like Netflix for books. I've been saying this for years. It's free for you to use and you got to use it. But the, the next app I want to show you is iBooks. iBooks is not an app. It is just where you store PDFs. But I want to show you the trick with that. Okay, so in my iBooks, I have um, vocabulary words. Okay, so I'm going to pull my vocabulary words up just like this. What you can do with this is you can swipe. Okay, so you have that swiping motion and it becomes a digital flashcard, which is amazing. Any PowerPoint that you have can be turned into a PDF that can be placed in your iBooks for you to use. Also in your iBooks, you have this little pencil. So if you have any things like this that say, guess the word, they can use the pencil and they can circle the correct one, which is pretty amazing. Um, you're all of your, how many people use flashcards and you've made flashcards? No need to do that anymore. Lots of people have already made digital flashcards or you can make them yourself. If you have um, things that you have purchased on TPT and they are, power, they are PowerPoints, or like I said, it could be an old PowerPoint that you have, turn it into a PDF and you now have a digital vocabulary flashcard. It is just amazing. You can also, like I said, you can write on the on the picture on the on the inside of iBooks so they could label how many suitcases do you see in that picture. They can also circle the correct word that goes on that goes on there if you have a contraction. Um, PowerPoint that you've saved as a PDF. So many cool things that you can do with those iBooks. Class Kick, I can't say enough about this one. It has, it's, they have templates that you can use from Class Kick. Kids can add type, they can write, they can add pictures, they can add their voice, you can add your own voice, you can add a website. This is what I like about it. Every student's um, answers look different depending on where they get their text-based evidence. I ask a question, they go back in the book and find it. Uh, Class Kick has a wonderful YouTube channel if you want to get started on it. They also have, once you download it, they have a teacher tutorial that is amazing. So, I know that was fast, but epic. What I like about Epic is I can create collections for my students based on my own students' needs. So if my students are needing, uh, I have students that need the Read to Me books, or I have students that are looking to challenge themselves, I can create collections to help them out. This is our new reading series. I've already created a collection of extra books to go along with it. It's just amazing. I'm also doing the Titanic. I already have a Titanic collection ready to send out to my students. So one of the things that I really like about this is the students can put their headphones on and they can listen to a story. And as they're listening, they can pause that and write down information. So if they've got interesting facts or they've got bold words that they need, they can do that. And it just, it just they love the control of being able to pause it and, and think about their thinking. Seesaw. This is the big one. This is what I said you had to have. Kindergarten through 12th should be able to use this because the I know it looks a little elementary, but that's okay. Your kindergarten kids know these labels. They know that that pencil means to draw. They know that the camera roll is, is the mountain with the sun. They know to take a picture. They know how to do this. It just makes it so simple. This is what I see when I go home to grade, which makes it awesome that I don't have to take papers home. This is what I see and where I can grade from. Now, I do have a little surprise app that I want to tell you, and I have like 30 seconds to tell you. This is a surprise app for admi administration and teacher teams. It's called Marco Polo. What Marco Polo is, is a walkie-talkie. So if you have teacher teams and you have their phone numbers, they can take little videos of things that they see in their classroom that they're doing well with. So 
Administrators, put your teacher teams on this, have them record little things that are working well in their classroom, and it's just amazing. You've got to try it out with your friends, and you've got to try it out with your teacher teams. So, this is what I wanted to tell you I need to finish up. Every day, I give a little bit of Tech PD on my Instagram every single day. All you have to do is tap on my face, Teaching with Aptitude, and you will get a little bit of Tech PD every single day day that I am on there. So this is where you can uh, screenshot now if you need. Teaching with Aptitude Weebly uh, com. Teaching with Aptitude Cammy on Butter uh, Cammy Butterfield on Facebook. Teaching with Aptitude on Instagram and on Twitter. Thank you for being at the Teach with Tech conference.